Y'all already know what it is. Today, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step guide to get into your dream college. Now, this is by no means like an official guide or whatever, like this is literally what I came up out of my own brain, like today, literally today. This is just what helped me personally and I'm sharing with you guys now. So yeah, I got into college almost three years ago, which is insane to say. Class of 2025. 2025 is in one year. I'm graduating in one year, so time, flies i say this in every video but time really does fly so if you guys have been like watching my channel for a while you would know it's definitely more geared towards the lifestyle niche not so much like college admissions consulting or whatever like i never ventured down that path because i didn't feel like that qualified to tell you guys like how exactly to get your dream college but i do have some tips on what really did help me and again take everything with a grain of salt. Now I know Ivy Day is coming up and all current seniors are gonna find out where they're going to school. Obviously, if you're senior, you're done. Like, good luck, but you're done. This is more for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in high school. So, let's get into it. Step by step guide. Number one, figure out which standardized test you're best at and focus on meeting the 50th percentile of the scores taken by the school that you want. Once you reach that, you're done. Like you are done and don't beat yourself up on getting a perfect score because there's no point. Get to the 50 percentile and then you're done. Important to note that some schools like Harvard are not requiring standardized testing for the next few years. So let's say you don't get the score that you want on a test and it's like really hard to get the score that you want. Just stop, literally just stop and don't submit a test score. A lot of schools, a lot of schools are not requiring it anymore because probably finally realizing that a standardized test does not define your intelligence. A. Number two, figure out which extracurriculars will fit your interests the best and how you will use those to stand out from other applicants. Do not try everything in the book. You're not omniscient. No one is omniscient. There's literally no point in doing that. It's just like obvious that one, you're not showing like what your true passions are and two, it's just obvious. You're like being like way too much of a try hard just to get in college. Like you're doing all this for the sake of getting in the college and for what? Like that's pointless. But yeah, stick to a handful, maybe like three extracurriculars that you are very good at and just stick to it. Even one or two. Just make sure you showcase your passion in the activities that you do choose to show on your application. Do what you love and do what you're good at. Number three, strategize which schools you apply to. Make sure there's a good mix of safeties, target, and reach schools. Don't apply to all reach because that is a reach <laughs> to get into all the reaches so definitely don't do that and figure out your early decision or early action school as soon as you can and you can figure this out by researching the school's location academic programs clubs even visiting the campus to see if you like the vibe of the school do this as soon as you can so you figure out which school you want to apply to early and then also obviously have all the other schools in mind for a regular decision number four start your essays as soon as possible and, and i know a lot of people say this but i can't stress this enough if your senior year is coming up especially now literally now like right now is the time to think about what your common app essay will be about and start that draft like now like after you watch this video start thinking about it right now it's important to get your main common app essay out of the way so then you can start focusing on all the supplementals for all the other schools because that's a lot. Common app essay, just get that done as soon as you can. And obviously you can like revise it as you like continue with your supplemental essays, but start the draft now, especially with senior years coming up. Number five, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And I'm not referring to the environment. By reduce, I mean don't make your essays too verbose. No one wants to see flowery vocabulary. No one wants it to just like drag on and on and on and for no reason. Just keep it to the point and use your own voice. And then you can reuse any supplemental essays that are relevant to others, but make sure you recycle them so that they fit the school and the prompt of the essay that you're writing. It's okay to reuse essays, I did that a lot, but just make sure you tweak them as necessary to fit each prompt and show that you're a perfect fit 
for whichever school you're applying to. Okay, this is an important one. Number six, write your essays for regular decision while waiting on early decision or early action results. Do not make the mistake of waiting until after your early admission results come out, then you might get deferred or rejected and you got no essays left. You always have to think worst case scenario. So you need the backups, you need the backups. I applied to Yale restrictive early action and I got deferred, obviously hoping to get admitted, but I knew that was a very high possibility that I get deferred or rejected. So I was really cranking out my other essays while waiting for my Yale results. And then it worked out because I had the essays written out and then I got into the other schools that I wanted to get into regular decision. Number seven, get a few people to read over your essays for feedback. Don't give your essay to like literally everyone you know, like give it to a few, get some external feedback, see what could be revised. But after this feedback, make sure all your revised essays stay in your own voice. Like don't let whoever else change your essay too much. You don't have to take all their feedback, but if you think it's helpful, use that to revise your essays. And another tip that I found very helpful is reading your essays out loud, either to yourself or to other people. When you hear your words out loud you can like figure out like what's weird or not and then you can figure out what should be changed number eight write a letter of continued interest or somehow update school if there's like an option to do so if you get deferred early action or early decision in this letter of continued interest you can just update the school on any recent accomplishments updates with your extracurriculars anything that you think that the school should know anything that would be helpful for them to know and finally number nine after all of your regular decision applications are submitted calm down take a deep breath and enjoy the rest of your senior year because this is literally the last time in your life where you can be a kid before venturing into the real world as an adult. And I finished high school in three years, so you can imagine what it was like going straight into college at 17, and we'll get more into that later. But once you start college, you just have to take on so many new challenges and a new environment. Definitely very valuable to enjoy the last few moments of high school as a kid. So that concludes my step-by-step -step guide, but I do have some tips and words of advice based on my own personal journey that I think would be super Super helpful for high schoolers applying to college especially any ivies like top tier universities you gotta listen to this all right if you take away anything from this video remember these three things one play your strengths again don't do everything in the book two dedication is key three grades aren't everything again try your best to meet that benchmark for the test scores resubmitting the test scores and after that it's all about your essays and extracurriculars and setting yourself apart from other applicants through that and now fun part of the video. I am acknowledging that this is an extremely difficult process. Definitely hardest time of my life. No joke, hardest time for sure. So I'm here to help you guys. And again, not an official college admissions counselor by any means, but having gone through all this and having been in college for a few years now, I do feel like I could provide some valuable advice for any high schoolers wanting to get into top tier schools or just, you know, getting advice on high school and college in general. So my good friend, Lenny, go watch his TikTok right now if you don't follow him. Actually, TikTok's about to be banned, but go follow Lemmy on like all platforms. And he has been working super hard on his startup recently, Lacuna Mentors, and he has a whole bunch of mentors already. I'm one of them. So yeah, head to the link in the description box and you can see my available times and you can book a call with me to get advice on these topics on the screen. It's also on my profile on the website. So yeah, shout out Lemmy and thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a Lacuna Mentor. All right, getting into my story. Now, if you guys have been here since my college decision reactions, you're a real one and thank you for following along my journey but i'm gonna talk a little bit more about my personal experience applying to college in high school i think it's always important to like provide context on you know like an applicant's background you know what they did and all that context on my experience i'm not a natural test taker at all but i found out i was way better at the sat than the act so i just focused on that like so much and but so much i mean too much I went through two of the official SAT practice test books. That's eight practice tests in one book. So I did all eight of those twice. So I took the SAT for a total of five times, twice in middle school, that doesn't count, but y'all get the point. I am literally propping my camera up on the books. Like, this was very traumatizing. And this is not necessary. 
just so y'all know. So I first took it in seventh grade to get into this thing called Duke Tip, and that's not even like a thing anymore. It's like this like summer program for middle school students, I guess. I don't even know. And then I took it again in eighth grade to get into dual enrollment. I talked a lot about that in my stats and extracurriculars video. I took 16 dual enrollment classes total, and again, not necessary, but this is just what I did in high school. So then I took the SAT three times in high school. First time was a 1410 sophomore year. Then skipped junior year, um, went from sophomore to senior year. And I took two tests, two weeks back to back, only because I wouldn't have gotten the results from the first test back by the time the second one happened. So I was like, mm, just to be safe, I'm gonna take it twice back to back. Cause this was already like my senior fall cause I had skipped junior year. So I was like, time's ticking and I just need to suffer and do it. So I did. First one, I ended up getting, I think a 1510 and then the second one I got a 1490. And then my super score was a 1530 from those two. So yeah, I met the 50th percentile for the SAT for the schools that I wanted to get into. And I stopped right there because I did not need to go further. As for extracurriculars, my main three were piano, dance, and research. Piano and dance were activities that I loved doing since kindergarten, elementary school, and I really highlighted my passions for those in a lot of my essays. And then research, I started that in high school. I did a couple of research projects, one in medical imaging, the other in like lithium ion batteries. You can learn more about that in my stats and extracurriculars video. Yeah, I also did like this thing called like the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. It was like some like independent research I did on my own. I scored like the top 30% of that. So it was like, it was like, it was something. And another thing I did was founding two clubs in high school. One being the Cultural Appreciation Club. And two, I started the Mu Alpha Theta chapter at my high school. It's Math Honor Society. And I'm pretty sure it's still running at my school to this day. So yeah, that was pretty cool you know getting to be in charge of that and being presidents of these clubs there was definitely no need for me to do more than that that's for sure that was like a lot already at that point point. and then during the actual like essay writing process i ended up writing two completely different common app essays like the main common app essay and i submitted these to different schools based on what supplementals i had because like from one of the common app essay versions i had that was reused and recycled as a supplemental for other schools i just like chose what fit for the application but that is very not necessary to write two completely different common app essays and no i don't think i'm going to share them because i think one they're not like super great representations of really good common app essays and i've gone this long without sharing my essays i also just don't think there's any point in me sharing them there are also like so many like essays out there online and again at the end of the day you gotta write your own essay not mine <laughs> for my two different common app essays it's actually crazy because one got me in harvard one got me in columbia and I don't think it's like these like actual essays that like really helped me. Um, I read my admissions file for Harvard because like I go to Harvard now, but they really liked my dedication to my extracurriculars and you know, just like my drive in general in high school. So I think my like supplemental essay for Harvard helped and then also, also the supplements for Columbia. So yay. I just happened to write two different column apps. And then going into the whole skipping the whole grade thing, um, going from sophomore to senior year was extremely stressful and traumatizing. And it brought about many reservations and fears about getting into the college of my dreams. I was just like scrambling to like do everything I can senior year and it obviously worked out in the end, but it was a lot. And I know that it helped me a lot, you know, like being very ambitious and driven in high school. Cause I saw that was like a good thing in my admissions file, but it is absolutely not the path for everyone just because i graduated high school in three years don't think you need to do so honestly if anything graduating in four years it'll give you so much more time to like really focus on you know what you want to showcase in your application and it'll give you more time for things like research starting a nonprofit, whatever clubs you're involved in any other extracurricular activities and getting your grades up there so yeah if anything four years it'll give you more time to achieve like more things. All right, so that concludes like my whole spiel and like advice and all that. Like I literally have nothing else to say at this point. So now time for some reassurance. None of this, none of what I just said, literally none of it actually matters. At the end of the day, none of it matters. Oh, but how long you go to Harvard and how it's so easy for you to say that. Yeah, I go to the school now and I see the insane realities of it that literally no one else would know from not going to it. A lot of people hate it. I'm not saying I hate it. I'm not saying any of that, but it's hard. It's hard. I made a Harvard is hard, no cap video freshman year. 
it's hard. It's very hard. You gotta know what, you, what you're getting yourselves into. One of the biggest misconceptions out there is that going to a, an elite university will guarantee you like success for life. So not true. So, 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 so not true. I cannot stress how many summer internships I've been rejected from. Junior summer is dawning upon me and I have nothing planned at all. I have no idea what I'm doing post grad either and it's crazy because again I am still a teenager and I have to think about all these life plans what's happening I don't know I don't know <sighs> yeah at the end of the day it's about getting the life skills you need to succeed you can do that with pretty much any school no matter what school you go to it's about what you make out of it for your education and you know there's so many more successful people from like state schools or from no school at all because they did what they could to achieve their dreams and so many people think like oh yeah you're guaranteed a job at like any like company um any huge company like no that is so not true because you have to remind yourself that you're competing against all these other people at the school that you go to once you get to a school like this you are no longer the best in your class unless you're like a genius which which i'm not and i'm like average so it's so much harder to compete against all these people from my school and like similar schools it's hard it's hard my three years of high school was very traumatizing but i am at harvard now so it's hard to say that you know everything i did in high school was like a regret because it wasn't it got me to where i am today but again i really want to stress that my path is not the only path to get to a school like this it, it really isn't finishing high school so early starting college so early definitely not ideal i would not recommend it to anyone to be honest obviously i'm very proud of how far i've come how much i've grown in college but again i think it would have been very valuable for me to at least like take some time off before starting school because going into freshman year of college my eq was extremely low and I just like did not have like those life skills to succeed as an adult. I was 17, dude. I was supposed to be in high school. Nothing I can do about it now. But yeah, that's kind of like why I am considering gapping now. But that's a conversation for later. I am turning 20 soon and I'm like thinking of making a video on life skills for teenagers because I got a lot to tell you guys. <laughs> and final point of this video, at the end of the day, you will end up at the place that is meant for you. Some higher power, if you believe in that, I think I do. Some higher power out there, this is out of your hands. At one point, it's like out of your hands. And whatever it is, we'll make sure that you are on the right path and you will end up at the place you're meant to be. It'll all work out in the end. All right, that concludes my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Book a call with me at Lacuna Mentors and See y'all in the next video. Okay, bye.